I was five years old when my grandfather took me on his lap to look at the night sky through his telescope. And he showed me these amazing craters on the moon. And I also remember he had this big encyclopedia with pictures of the universe. And I could look at them for hours. And this picture was my favorite. Buzz Aldrin, the Apollo 11 astronaut standing on the moon. And I could imagine myself standing there, looking back at the Earth, looking into deep space, thinking about traveling to faraway galaxies. But I guess as I got older, my ideas for a career became a bit more practical. So yeah, becoming a Michael Jackson and an astronaut wasn't really a feasible option. So I, after six years of being in university, I got a, a job at a desk, like all people. But my thirst for adventure and my curiosity actually never left me. So in 2005, I changed my office job for the big high seas. And there I sailed more than 30,000 miles, traveling far away from, from land, venturing to new horizons. But what I discovered is that the signs of civilization were always very near, even as I ventured further and further away from shore. I would see waste floating in the sea and yellow silver, silver trails in the sky showing the traces of big cargo ships sailing by. But I was really only confronted with the magnitude of our impact on the Earth when I started studying an expedition to the Arctic, a sailing expedition. There I found out that some scientists predict that the ice of the North Pole might be gone within a decade. I couldn't believe the North Pole gone within one decade. I read so many stories of adventurers going north, trying to find new trade routes, risking their lives, battling the cold, battling the ice, and getting stuck and die even there. And now, no more ice. This is our last vast, pristine wilderness, and it might be gone within a decade. This is the home to the most incredible creatures of the sea, gone due to global warming. And what do we do? As this strategy unfolds, we are still looking for new oil, even in the Arctic. And we are still building new ships, big cargo ships, that emit more CO2 than a whole town together. That really shifted my paradigm. And there I decided with two friends to start the Joint Venture Earth Initiative. Not Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> because we want to show, we want to prove that within a decade, we can have clean shipping, CO2-free shipping possible. Because we believe that the technology is already available available to provide clean, reliable, and safe shipping, We're available to provide clean energy anywhere. But there are a lot of people that don't believe this, so we have to set an example. And that is why we will take an existing ship and rebuild it, and take it on an epic journey, sailing around the North Pole without emitting any CO2 in one season. Will this be hard? Yes, this will be very hard. We have to cross 18,000 kilometers of inhospitable ocean and territory to get around. And we have to be quick, because otherwise the ice from the, from the winter will catch us. So we cannot rely on sails only. We have to use an engine, and an engine needs power. And we, we calculated that we need to generate more than four megawatts of energy and store it on board. That's the equivalent of six times the consumption of an average household. So you think batteries? No, they won't do. We simply need too many, about 70 tons of batteries. So we need to make our own energy storage. What we will do on board of this ship, we will create hydrogen using seawater, solar energy, hydro energy, and wind energy. Hydrogen. Does anybody remember the Hindenburg? That's hydrogen. We're going to sail with a boat full of hydrogen across this treacherous ocean. And we are going to show that hydrogen is a very good, reliable, and safe alternative to any fuel or any storage system around, and one of the cleanest ones. 
Last year, we got a hold of a very special ship to make our expedition, the Ecolution. The Ecolution was designed and built by a former professor and our first Dutch astronaut, late Wibbel Okkels. This will be our platform for our expedition and our venture. We will literally build on his ideas and legacy for a cleaner future. And this is no coincidence. Astronauts are our natural allies. As they ventured further out into space, they were the first to see the impact of humans on the Earth as they looked back. And they were first to discover that the ice is really melting on the Arctic. And they also understand that we actually have the Earth is actually a spaceship, and we have one Earth, and we need to conserve it. Last year, we got invited by the ASE to come over and to tell about our story and our project. The ASE is the Association of Space Explorers. More than 90 astronauts from all over the world were in the room. We were pretty nervous. Bill Anders was there. Bill Anders, this is the guy uh, who was, took the first picture of the Earth rise. I'll show you this one. The Earth rising beho behind the horizon of the, of the moon. So you, you can understand I get pretty nervous around people like that. And our presentation actually was pretty shit. <laughs> but we were overwhelmed with the enthusiasm. More than 20 astronauts from Germany, US, even uh, Russia came to, up to us and pledged their alliance. They said they wanted to support us. Because it's really astronauts that understand very well that technology can take us to places beyond our imagination. And that with cooperation, we can do that within a very short period. They have their own example, floating out in space. The ISS, the International Space Station, floating out for decades, autonomous and sustainable. And this is exactly what we want to show with Joint Venture Earth going to the Arctic. We want to show that there's a very clear possibility of a clean energy future in the near future. We want to set this example. Because we believe that it's not the idea of spaceflight that really changed our perception. It's actually the pioneers that took to space that really shook our minds and change our paradigm. So will this be uh, adventurous? Yes, this will be very adventurous. Do we have a budget? No, <laughs> we don't have a budget. But we must succeed. This mission has to succeed. Because I would like to inspire my grandchildren like astronauts did inspire me when I was a five-year-old boy. Thank you very much.